And hello, everyone. Welcome to Matplotlib, uh, getting started in Python with me, Tokyo EdTech. So let me first give a quick shout out to my channel members, Kevin, who becomes our first paddle member. Thank you so much, Kevin, for three months of support. And also I want to welcome to our second month Snakes members, uh, Finez. Thank you so much for your support and everyone else here on the channel. And I'm not sure if I said in my last video, make sure I want to say hi to Chris and Old School Coder. Check out Old School Coder's YouTube channel today on my channel. I'm going to be talking about the matplotlib library. Um, just, the, just the absolute basics to help you get started. This is a pretty big uh, library. It does a lot of stuff. I'm going to show you just a tiny little piece of that. So the first thing we have to do to get started is we first have to make sure that you have it installed. Okay, so what you would have to do to, to test this is go to import matplotlib dot pyplot this is we're gonna be using the pyplot section i don't know how else to put it uh of matplot library and i'm gonna record uh, i'm gonna import it as plt so when we do import something as we basically change the name and so this is a little bit of a convenience for us so i'm just gonna go ahead and run this and see what happens okay so program exited and you see it says no module named matplotlib found okay so this tells me something has gone desperately wrong. Uh, matplotlib, and I'm gonna go up here and just check my build commands. Okay, we are in Python 3. So let me go ahead and test this. I'm gonna go down to the terminal here. I'm in Genie, and I'm gonna say pip. I'm gonna try pip install matplotlib. Okay, pip not found. So I'm gonna try pip3 install matplotlib. And we should see, oh, okay, there we go. I didn't have it installed. I don't know how that's possible. And so you can see it's actually installing a bunch of stuff. Okay, and so it's done a bunch of things and that's how I've installed it. I'm actually glad that that happened so you can see the install process. And I'll, I'll put that command down below. Um, actually, I'll put it up here too. So I type this in the terminal and this should work on Windows and, and Mac and Linux as well, which is what I'm running. So it was um, uh, pip3 install matplotlib. Okay, and if that doesn't work, I'm not quite sure what to tell you. So I'm going to go ahead and run this again and see what happens. And basically nothing happened. Exited with code zero. So that tells me there were no errors. So this kind of gives me an idea that, hey, maybe this worked. So basically, PyPlot is a kind of uh, an interface for the matplot library that helps you to make simple charts. It's not as powerful as the full thing, but it's good for beginners and getting started. So I'm just going to try one of the commands. I'm going to try plot.show and just see what happens. And I'm going to go ahead and run that. And did anything pop up anywhere on my computer? No, it did not. Okay, so it ended. I think. Okay, so that's not what I expected. So I think maybe I have to actually go ahead and add some data. So I'm going to go ahead and add some data. And let's just go ahead and add, say, some scores. So let's say we've got our test scores. We're going to 35. We didn't do very well. Then we did much better. We got an 89. Then we sunk back down to 67. And oh, we had a good day. And then we started getting A's for that. So what I got to do then is I got to do plt dot plot scores. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and run that and see what happens. And there we go. Fantastic. Okay, so that tells us a little bit. So here is the absolute bare, bare, bare minimum for using this particular program. So we need to create a list of, of values. We need to plot those values. So notice I use scores and scores here. And then we use plt.show. And then what happens is it pops up this really nice window for you. And you know, you'll see, so zero, so this is my first score, because remember they start list indexes start at zero. So that was a 35. We then I got an 89, then a 67, 95, and you can see how it went out there. So you'll see a couple of options here. Now on some computers you'll see it down below, on mine it happens to be up here. So I can click that and I can pan. 
Okay, so I can look around in case things I want to move off the scale. I can click here to zoom in on a section of the chart. And I'm not sure what this one does. Oh, I can edit that. That's pretty cool. I didn't know you could do that. That's pretty cool. And I can also save this onto my computer as a PNG file, which is pretty cool. And I'm going to show you how to do that programmatically later. Now, something to keep in mind. While plt.show is visible on the screen, this program over here has stopped running. So if you're going to put this into another program, it will stop until I close it, and then the program will continue running. Now, in this case, of course, it ended because I'm at the end. Okay. So that is the basics of it. So what I want to do is I want to show you a few little tricks, a few little things to you know, make your charts look nicer, and then kind of let you have a play with it. So something I might want to do is I might want to add a title to, to my uh, how can I put it? to my my chart. Um, so as I was mentioning over here, just to show you, I'm using the pie plot uh, interface of this library. And so here are all the different functions that you can play around with. Now, I definitely do not know what all of them do. I'm going to show you just a few of them. Now, obviously, we've used plot so far, and we have used show. So a couple things. I'm going to go ahead and try plt.xlabel. And I'm going to say, you know, call this score number. And I'm going to do plt.ylabel. And that's going to be percent. We'll say call it percent. So I'm going to test that because I'm doing this from memory, so I could be wrong. So I'm going to hit, go ahead and run that. And cool, that was correct. So you can see now the x label down here is score number, and the Y label over here is percent, which is pretty cool. Okay. Now, one thing, um, in this particular case, we know that, you know, because since we're doing percentages, it's going to range from 0 to 100. And because we only have a range, uh, a low of 35 and a high of 99, it's using that as the range. So what we can do is we can use something called YLIM, so the Y limits, I guess you'd say. And that's going to be a list. I think it could probably be a tuple, but I haven't tested that. So it's going to go from 0 to 100. And note, I'm using little square brackets here, not round brackets. Well, again, may work, may not. I haven't tried it. So I'm going to go ahead and run that and see what happens. And you see here now 0, which is this 0, and 100, which is the maximum value. So that gives us the ability to control the range of what we see. And we could do the same thing. There is an X limb, which does the exact same thing for uh, the, X, the X axis. Okay. Um, next thing we might want to do is when we plot, we may want to label that. So in here, I'm going to put oops, label equals scores. And this could be, well, well, we'll leave that at that for now. I'm going to go ahead and run that and see if anything happens. Oops. I always spell label wrong, unfortunately. Let's go ahead and run that. And notice how we don't really see any difference here. Okay, so this is used, maybe used other places. The only place I know so far that it's used is in the legend. So you'll see there's a legend method here. Okay, so what I can do is going to put plt.legend and it will automatically put a legend onto our chart for us. Okay, and there you go. So you can see how we've got scores and a blue line, which is kind of cool. Now, something we could do here is I could say I can make another list of scores and let's say we're comparing two students. So let's say we get this one and then I didn't do quite as well on that one, did really well on that one, and then just, just dominated, just perfect scores. Okay. And then so what I need to do is go ahead and just copy this. Okay, so I'm going to make this scores 2, which I usually don't recommend. Um, so let's say this, this is Bob and this is Sue. and. Sue has done very well, so I'm going to go ahead and run that. And you can see here how we've got 
Now scores and scores too. You can see how the legend has moved actually. Um, it automatically moved, I guess, because there wasn't enough space there. And you can see now, because this went up to 100, we don't really see Sue's scores. So what we might want to do is come back over here and make this 101 so that we can see that. And I'm going to go ahead and run that again. And my computer has locked up. So probably it's still recording. It'll, it'll unlock itself in a second. Yep, there we go. Maybe. There we go. Fantastic. Okay, so let's go ahead and run that again. Yeah, report a problem. Yep, I don't need to report it. Don't send. Um, so go ahead and run that. This happens a lot with OBS. And not a lot, but often enough that it's annoying. Um, so probably, I'm going to try it one more time. And there we go. Okay, so you can see now, because I changed that 100 to 101, I can now see the line there. So you can see how it has a legend. It has some default colors. And you can put multiple plots onto one chart, which is really, really cool. Okay. Um, now, we are using plot.show. Now, I can also use, let me go back to here. Uh, I think it's plot.savefig. Yeah, there it is. Okay, so there's a, there's a function called savefig. And there's all kinds of options here. Uh, I'm just going to show you the real basic thing. So instead of showing it, or I could do both, I could say plt.savefig, and I can just call it, you know, figure one, png. And as far as I know, it saves in pngs. So if I run this, now this is still going to pop up. I'm going to close that. And then if I go into my files, and where does that, where did I put that at? Okay, so my Python file you can see is saved on my desktop. So if I go to my desktop, I'll also see figure1.png. That's really cool. So this is something that I can put into an assignment, I can put into a chart, or you know, whatever I need to have that used for. Um, so that's that's the basics. That's that's basically it. Um, that's kind of how you, you do it. Now, there's this other cool thing, and I'm going to go back to the plot, pyplot plot, um, let's see here, pyplot plot method. And what you can do, if you don't want to use the default colors, you can do this really, really kind of cool uh, techie thing and format and use what's called a format string. So the, the, the pattern is marker, line, and color, okay? So the marker is where each data point is. So for example, we've got a circle marker. So what I would do here is I would put quote, O quote, comma, and let's say I wanna put a, hmm, let's see, let's do a triangle up, so that's the up thingy, uh, up tick, up carry, and I'm not even sure where it is on my keyboard. So I actually don't see it here anywhere. So I'm going to skip that. I could copy that scale, copy it. Um, it's got to be on my keyboard somewhere. Control copy, but I want to make you guys wait. Um, where is that sucker at? Um, to, yeah, there. Quote, comma. So I'm going to go ahead and run it and see what the result is, which is pretty cool. So you can see now I've got scores is a blue dot. Okay. Scores two is a little orange triangle. Now, um, I lost the lines. Okay. So part of this formatting, it's marker, line type, then color. So if you're going to use the format, you need to tell it what line style to use as well. So a colon is a dotted line. So I'll go ahead and use the colon. Let's go ahead and test that. Okay, that's pretty cool. So now you can see we've got circle markers for scores. We've got triangular, vertical triangular markers for scores too. And the final thing we can choose is color. Now, these are the default colors, but apparently you can use these as well. I haven't tried that yet, so I don't know how it works. So I'm just going to stick with these. So I'm going to go ahead and make the first line uh, green and the second line red, just to test it out. So, oops, wrong. 
Go ahead and hit F5. And you can see now how the colors have changed. And again, I can still do all those things I was talking about. I can move around. Um, I can zoom in. And I can see, you know, if there's a lot of data, I can zoom in and see kind of what's going on in my data. And then once I do this, I can save it. I believe it will save the figure. We'll test it. Figure one, we'll say zoom. So I'm kind of curious about this. And zoom. So I'm going to go back to my desktop and see if see what it looks like. And I'll bring that up for you. And figure one, zoom. And it did, it did save the Zoom version. So I'm not sure how to do the Zooming programmatically because I've never tried it before. To be honest, I just kind of really started using this, but it's so cool, it's so easy that I thought I would share this with my viewers because I thought you guys would be interested in this as well. Um, I do want to try one more thing. I haven't done this before, but I saw it done. And let's say we have, instead of scores, we have temperatures. Okay, and... I'm going to take this out and I'm going to take that out and I'm going to go ahead and temperature, say Tokyo temperature because I live in Tokyo um, and I'm going to call this temperatures. Now uh, let's go ahead and pop over the internet real quick and we'll say Tokyo temperature and see what comes up. Okay, there we go. So you can see we got 7, 8, 12. Now this is all Celsius, sorry for American people. Um, I know you guys aren't uh, down with the Celsius thing. Seven, so I'm gonna put seven, comma eight, comma 12, 15, 10, nine, and what's next Monday gonna be? Nine, so we have nine in a row. Okay, not a huge amount of variation. Okay, so let's stick with that. And I'm just gonna go ahead and run this and make sure it's still working. I did make a few changes. Now you can see how we still got zero to 100. Now in Celsius, 100 is uh, boiling. So we probably don't want it to be that high. So let's just go ahead and put 50. Um, so it rarely gets above, it doesn't get that hot here, but I have had some 40 some degree days. Um, so this is a bit more accurate. Now what we wanna try to do, and again, I've seen it done, I haven't tried it yet, is I want to change the 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 to, uh, let's see, I can't go over, that's not what I want to happen, to Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Okay. And I think how that is done is like this. I'm going to add an extra set of brackets, and then I'm going to put in here, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and uh, Monday. Now notice it is a list with two lists inside of it. So it's a multi-dimensional multi list or multi-dimensional array, depending on how you wanna, what you wanna call it. And I think this will do what I want, I'm not sure. Fingers crossed. Yeah, it didn't work. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna go over here and just kinda, again, this is something I probably should have tested ahead of time, but I was like, eh, how hard can it be? Um, <laughs> let's see here. Um, this is where I'm gonna go ahead and Google. I'm gonna say, uh, Pi plot, and I want to say label uh, x axis. Label x x axis data point. I don't know, I'm not sure how else to put it. Um, label Python data points on plot. All right. Okay, so here. Hmm. 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 Interesting. Uh, okay, that was a little bit more complicated than what I'm used to. So I'm gonna go back to here and just see if that, I'm gonna go ahead and unlabel that. I'm gonna put the temperatures, I'm gonna call this labels, just to see what happens. And 
and temperatures, labels. Ugh. Who knows? Let's see what happens. Yeah, I wasn't happy about that, I thought. Uh, Whoa, that is not what I wanted. Okay, so I got Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday over here. I got the numbers over here. So let's go ahead and reverse those. All right, live and learn. Labels, temperatures. Oh my gosh, that there it worked. Okay, so that is more more up to speed. Um, I know I've seen this other format, but I'm not sure why it didn't work in this particular case. But uh, yeah, there we go. Okay, so you put your labels and then your values. So X comes before Y, and you can see now I've got Tuesday is seven, Wednesday is eight, uh, Thursday is going to be twelve, Friday is going to be fifteen etc, etc, etc. And again, so you can see how we get a very nice chart out of this. And if I go back to my desktop, because I still have the saving uh, line in there, if I go ahead and open up figure one, and now I, it has saved it with the proper net. Now I know it's not a score anymore, so I should have fixed that. Let's go ahead and fix that and make it look nice. So the X label should be day, uh, day. And the Y label should be temperature. And I'll go ahead and put C in Celsius. Alrighty. And one more time. Let's take a look and see what we've got. Okay, temperature in Celsius, day of the week. And there we go. Fantastic. So that is a very tiny, tiny little piece of the map plot library. Um, you can see how there is some really amazing things are possible. Um, you see some of these, if you see some of the examples, um, there's a ton of uh, various uh, just just methods and things here you can play with. Um, it's really, really impressive what what is available through this library. And uh, yeah, so uh, hopefully that'll help you get started. Um, that's about what I know so far. And so for my needs so far, that's about all I need. And then as usual, I'll put a link down below uh, to, the, to the code. You can kind of download it and play with it. And uh, yeah, so click like, um, subscribe if you haven't subscribed. And if you're able to uh, consider becoming a channel member and supporting uh, the channel directly like uh, these fine folks here. Thanks so much. Uh, yeah, keep on coding. Take care.